What happens to our eyes when the pressure in our eyes isn't regulated? In this episode of Aki Talk, optometrist Francis Sai explains glaucoma, what causes it, the treatment options available, and the long-term care required. Dr. Sai? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hi, and welcome to Talk. Today we're going to be talking with optometrist Francis Tsai. Uh, good morning, doctor. Good morning. To start off, we would like for you to tell us a little bit about your background and your specialty. Yes, of course. Thank you guys so much for having me. I graduated from UC Berkeley in 2023, and I just finished my residency in ocular disease and refractive surgery at Omni Eye Services in New Jersey and New York. I see patients with a lot of different types of ocular disease and primarily glaucoma and cataracts. Um, I take care of them pre and post operatively and work with a lot of different ophthalmic surgeons and specialists our practice, including glaucoma, cataract, retina, cornea, neuro, ophthalmology, and oculoplastics. Well, that sounds like you cover an awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for our conversation today, we were sort of hoping you could talk to our audience a little bit more about glaucoma. What exactly is glaucoma? Yeah, so glaucoma is a neurodegenerative disease where the pressure in the eye is too high for the optic nerve to handle. And so ultimately, it damages the neuroretinal ganglion cells um, and causes the optic nerve to have damage. And then you can get irreversible vision loss as a result of it. So what exactly causes the condition? Is there anything that can be done to prevent it? There's a lot of things that can be involved in it. You know, it kind of depends on the mechanism. It can be multifactorial that can cause the pressure to be too high in the eye. So there's two big broad categories. One is open angle glaucoma and the other one is closed angle glaucoma, which refers to how the anatomy looks in terms of the anterior chamber angle and that is what regulates the eye pressure. So could you tell us a little bit more about the different types of glaucoma? Go into that in a little bit more detail. I'm really curious. Yeah, so there's also like within like primary and secondary, um, backtrack a little bit. So within those categories, there's primary and secondary, which refers to if there's an underlying condition that is causing it to be that way. Um, so for example, primary open angle glaucoma is the most common type of glaucoma out there. Um, and it means that there's no other underlying causes um, and that the anterior chamber is open. But you can have like pigmentary dispersion or pseudoexfoliative. You can have neovascularization. Um, you can have an inflammatory process that causes it to be a certain way, just to name a few. So who's most likely to develop glaucoma? What types of patients do you see most frequently? So I see all types of patients. Um, I've had patients, you know, who are young in their teens, 20s, all the way up to patients that are in the geriatric range. So anyone can develop a glaucoma, but um, there's different types of glaucoma that have greater prevalences in certain race and ethnicities, such as Primary open angle glaucoma is more prevalent in groups of African and Hispanic descent, um, pseudoexfoliative in Scandinavian descent, um, angle closure in patients of Asian descent, and the risk can increase if you have more risk factors, such as if you have a family history of glaucoma, um, older age, you know, 60s or above, higher pressures, um, thinner corneas, or even having a history of taking steroid medications or having a previous injury to the eye, things like that. So what are the most common manifestations of symptoms? Like what should I be looking out for to alert me that maybe that's what's going on and I should come in, uh, make an appointment and visit you? So the crazy thing is a majority of glaucoma is asymptomatic. So that's the biggest thing that I want everyone to know about. But of course, there are certain types that like you can have symptoms for. If you ever notice like a sudden change in your vision, you have dimming of the vision, headaches, nausea, eye pain, you should definitely see an eye doctor immediately. 
Um, patients who tend to notice like more symptoms, it could suggest that a, it's a late stage of glaucoma um, or a medical emergency and pertaining to those things that I mentioned earlier. So it's really important that if you notice something different, you can always just call up an eye doctor. So what different treatment options are available for patients with glaucoma? So there's different treatments, but primarily it's eye drops. Um, there are topical eye drops that lower the pressure in the eye. There's also laser treatments that can be done in the office to help lower the pressure as well. Um, unfortunately, right now there's no cure for it. So all the treatments is to slow the progression of the disease. Um, since the vision loss that you can get from glaucoma is irreversible. So are there any side effects from these treatments, like side effects from the drops or side effects from the lasers? Is there anything that patients need to know before they go in to slow down the progression of their glaucoma? Yeah, so there's different options. So usually, depending on the type of glaucoma, you'll be offered these different options for you in terms of the treatment. Each medication is has its own side effect profile. So um, your eye doctor, when they recommend one, will go over that with you. Um, and it also based on your medical history. So it's really important that you share what kind of systemic conditions that you have or any like allergies or other medications that you're currently taking for the rest of your body so that we can make sure that we give you a medication that doesn't have like side effects with the medication that you're taking. Um, but for the most part, the eye drops are, you know, relatively safe, low risk profile, same for the laser. I always tell my patients that with the laser treatment, it's very common to um, be a little uncomfortable that day afterwards, that I might be a little bit red or sore. Uh, but sometimes you could have an inflammatory reaction from the laser procedure. And sometimes that can cause your vision to be a little bit blurry and painful. And then you'll be using an eye drop to help with that. Okay. So do you have a typical post-procedural regimen for something like that? Yeah. So typically we instill those anti-inflammatory medications right after you do the laser procedure. I always tell my patients to go home with some artificial tears. So I give them some artificial tears to use for the meantime. And then we have them call us if there's ever any emergencies. We do have like an on-call service that we provide to them. Um, and so that we could take care of that as well. So since there's no cure for glaucoma, what are the long-term effects to the vision? Is it something once you realize what's going on and you have the procedure, you start taking the drops, the progression stops and halts there? Or are there different long-term effects to the vision that people need to know about? So the treatments are to slow the progression. So sometimes there is going to still be changes over time, but it's a lot slower in that sense, rather than if you were completely off the drops the progression of those changes would be a lot faster. Patients typically notice those vision changes a lot sooner, like dimming of the vision, or they feel like they're starting to bump into things because glaucoma starts to take away from your side vision. And then more centrally, some types are the other direction. That's more like in the central part of the range and then a little bit outwards. Um, and so the most important thing is um, to follow up regularly with your eye doctor. So when you have glaucoma, you are going to have more visits, usually, you know, every couple of months, um, depending on how things look. And we do different visual field tests to monitor those changes and different scans to look at those different cells and make sure that things are still at an adequate level, or is there a need to escalate the treatment? What would escalating the treatment look like? So if you're already on just one drop, sometimes it's an additional drop or there's an additional laser treatment. It depends if you've already had a laser treatment. Usually laser treatment's only done once a year. Um, there's also surgical options, but those are usually like kept for the end. Um, if you start to develop your cataracts, there's also procedures that can do um, at the same time with your cataract surgery to help lower the pressure, like a goniotomy or a stent to help lower the pressure as well. So what would a long-term maintenance regimen for a patient with glaucoma look like, uh, both at the practice and at home, you know, for regular maintenance? What does that look like? 
So a lot of my patients, they always say at the beginning, it's kind of like a trial and error with how to incorporate their eye drops into their um, routine because, you know, inherently at the beginning, you might miss a few. So you kind of have to find a good like rundown of making sure to get your drops in. So I always understand that with my patients um, and I tailor my plans to them. So if they have like a change in like their finances or some current situation where it's a little bit tougher to get a medication in or they start to develop like a hand tremor, then we start to think about different things. So like instead of using eye drops, should we do a laser treatment? Should we do another medication that can be injected into the eye? Things like that. As medicine is starting to evolve for glaucoma, there's definitely more options out there for us now. Um, a big thing for patients is they tend to get a lot of dryness um, from just using the medications because the eye drops can irritate the surface of the eye and the tear film. Um, so managing the dry eye side of things is also a huge part of it as well. How do you usually handle that portion? What, what would your recommendation be for a glaucoma patient who's suffering with these dry eye conditions? Usually I always do a baseline um, assessment first and see where they are in terms of how symptomatic they are. Um, I always try to balance the amount of dry eye drops. Um, I typically introduce punctal plugs a little bit sooner for the patients um, so that they're a little bit more comfortable. Um, I also sometimes offer to balance out their dry eye regimen by doing it like every other day rather than every day because sometimes it can be a lot just to have to put in multiple drops throughout the day. How important would you say incorporating eyelid hygiene into this regimen could be for your patients? Is that is that part of what you recommend at all? Yes, absolutely. Especially with my older uh, patients, um, the they tend to get a lot more debris on their eyelashes uh, just from having any remaining residual stuff from using the eye drops or if they are wearing makeup. Um, so I always encourage them to have a set schedule when it comes to lid hygiene. I know a lot of them always tell me like I have so much stuff to do in the morning and all my eye drops. And I always tell them our most important goal is to make sure you use your eye, um, your glaucoma drops. So I usually recommend to them do like a essentially like your own spa day, like three or four times a week. And you're just going to do your lid scrubs. You're going to do your artificial tears. You're going to sit there and do your warm compress and just kind of relax and just kind of take your takes time for yourself, essentially. And they really like that because it's like a set time during the week that they get to do that for themselves. That's really good advice. I love that. Um, are there any other lifestyle adjustments that glaucoma patients need to be prepared for? Are there things that they can do to make uh, living with glaucoma better or things that are going to affect them where they need to adjust in different ways, driving at night, anything like that? Um, nothing in particular. I mean, over time, as you get, if, especially with late stage glaucoma, things are a little bit more... Um, focus centrally. And so um, patients that have more advanced glaucoma, I usually do recommend to them to make some adjustments, whether it's like more lighting or having a low vision specialist to help enlarge their central part of their vision um, as best they can with any magnifiers. But for the most part, like everybody else, I always recommend having a, you know, healthy, balanced lifestyle, just you know, making sure everything else is good for the rest of your body as well. Well, thank you so much, doctor. Uh, is there anything else that you want to talk to our audience about today? Yeah, I just wanted to put out that, you know, glaucoma can be very cl complex and it can involve a lot of different things. Um, when you see your eye doctor, they may take scans and perform visual field tests in order to monitor your condition and offer the best treatment plan for you. And sometimes those tests are offset. You may not do them all together at one time. And you may also be dilated as well. Um, your eyes are really important to you um, and to us. And an eye exam can reveal a lot about your health. And so my challenge to you is to schedule your annual eye exam to have a checkup. Well, thank you so much for talking to us about glaucoma today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.